Hello folks, again here it's uh, Sherman Wright reporting on behalf of Unite the Union here. I'm uh, talking with a Mr Robin Swan, and a local MLA who represents the Ulster Unionist Party. Uh, Robin, obviously, thanks very much for your time. No problem, Sherman. Thanks for having the chance to talk with me. You're very welcome, Robin. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, the situation is, Robin, uh, Robin, I obviously don't have to express the fact that the situation is the rally for the future today in connection with Unite the Union uh, is mainly about uh, seeking further employment in Ballymena and trying to get a, a bigger infrastructure as far as maybe one day uh, recapturating, uh, recapitulating uh, what had been uh, a main hub for industry within Northern Ireland. Uh, do you feel that the Stormont uh, Committee, uh, the Stormont, uh, uh, the MLAs within the Assembly, uh, people can have confidence in that uh, job being cried out? Is there a short fix? Or would there be, uh, is it more a future, a futuristic uh, uh, type of uh, apparatus that you will apply? I think what we need to do is start now, Sherman, and I think that's one of the things Unite's rally here today has proven. Now, this has to be the start of the, the regeneration of Ballymena. One of the fixes that should be looked at and can be looked at that I've raised before is actually turning Ballymena into an enterprise zone. The English government, or the, sorry, the UK government in Westminster have created enterprise zones across the length and breadth of England and Wales, but there's none in Northern Ireland. There's none established in Northern Ireland for manufacturing, and that's the opportunity we have now to start and put that in progress and into process to establish an enterprise zone here in Ballymena and capture the skills that we have that are going to be lost to Michelin and Gallaghers when they close down. Like if we're out in the world stage now from Bolton Ballymena as an enterprise zone with the skill base that we'll have available, unfortunately have available, but have that on the world stage actually selling that as a, as a selling point, a unique selling point that Ballymena now has. Robin, you're, you mentioned one word there, unique. Now, Ballymena was very unique over the, the period of years there for being a hub of an industry of uh, specialised workers and highly skilled workers, aren't that? And very, very highly motivated workers and very reliable and very honourable towards their employees. Uh, now, the situation is, I think people feel that they've been kicked aside, obviously. Now, obviously, the, 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 the manufacturers of JTI Gallaghers and uh, Michelin, they, they are putting in a process where uh, payments will be received, obviously, for their labour over the years and situations uh, will, 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 will be quelled over a period of time, which sort of offers a relaxant on... Uh, a less acute a, a cutting of the uh, the jobs. How energetic do you feel that the response will be, Robin, before uh, perhaps maybe there's an infrastructure set in place which can obviously provide maybe hopeful uh, hopeful apparatus for maybe a bigger infrastructure within the rates relief of a rent rates relief or or the sorry the uh, the uh, relief of rates and maybe lowered rents. Uh, would that be an incentive for small businesses to come back into Ballymena, fill up the, 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 the holes of the shops that are shut, and perhaps maybe uh, regain a bit of momentum within society? I think we have, you know, Ballymena has lost that retail infrastructure, or is losing it. You know, when we look around what shops have been lost in Ballymena, there's been a lot go, but there's a lot of good family shops still here in the town that need support it.